Welcome to Trump Wire, your trusted source for breaking headlines, global insights, and sharp analysis from around the world. If you're new here, don't forget to hit that subscribe button and turn on notifications so you never miss an update. The Florida Everglades, a wild, mysterious expanse, has always hidden secrets beneath its waters. This vast, untamed wilderness is home to countless species, many of which remain unseen by human eyes. For years, an invasive giant, the Burmese python, has silently devastated this ecosystem. These formidable predators have disrupted the natural balance, preying on native wildlife and multiplying at an alarming rate. But now, a new mystery scientists are finding these massive snakes dead, their heads cleanly severed. This gruesome discovery has raised more questions than answers. This isn't a one-off. Across South Florida, researchers are discovering beheaded pythons, a pattern that's left even experts stunned. The frequency and precision of these incidents suggest a deliberate act. Imagine tracking a radio-tagged python for weeks, only to find its headless body in the swamp. The implications are both chilling and perplexing. Who or what could take down one of the world's largest snakes with such precision? The Everglades is a place of many predators, but few could accomplish such a feat. The Burmese python is an apex predator here, with few natural enemies. Its dominance in this environment makes these discoveries even more baffling. Theories swirled, alligators, other pythons. But the kills were too clean, too deliberate. The precision suggested a level of skill and intent not typically seen in nature. This was the work of a skilled predator, not a scavenger. The methodical nature of the beheadings pointed to a calculated hunter. The Everglades was whispering a new story, and the scientific community was desperate for answers. Each new discovery added to the growing sense of urgency and intrigue. The stage was set for a wild investigation. Scientists and researchers were on the brink of uncovering a hidden truth, one that could reshape our understanding of this enigmatic wilderness. To understand the shock of these discoveries, you need to know the devastation Burmese pythons have caused in Florida. Released through the exotic pet trade and disasters like Hurricane Andrew, these snakes found a perfect home in the Everglades. With no natural predators, their numbers exploded. Tens of thousands now slither through the swamps. The impact? Catastrophic. Mammal populations have plummeted by over 90% in some areas. Pythons eat everything. Rabbits, birds, even alligators. The food web is collapsing and the Everglades is changing before our eyes. Despite hunts and removal programs, the snakes remain elusive and unstoppable. For years it seemed like nothing could slow them down. But the mystery of the beheaded pythons hinted at a new force in play. For the first time, hope flickered on the horizon. In the battle against invasive Burmese pythons, scientists have developed a clever strategy turning the snakes themselves into unwitting informants. By surgically implanting radio transmitters into large male pythons, researchers can track their movements through the dense Florida wilderness, hoping these males will lead them straight to breeding females. This innovative approach has become a vital tool in the ongoing effort to control the python population, which has devastated native wildlife across the Everglades. Among these scout snakes, one stood out, a massive powerful male named Loki. Loki was not just another python, he was a key player in the scientist's plan, his every move closely monitored as he navigated the wild, unpredictable landscape of the Everglades. But in December 2022, something unexpected happened, Loki's radio signal, which had been reliably transmitting his location, suddenly went silent, deep within the mysterious Fakahachi Strand. The team knew this could mean trouble. Hoping to find Loki with a female python, the researchers instead stumbled upon a grim scene. Loki was dead, his head and neck savagely gnawed off, his massive body partially buried beneath a thick layer of leaves and forest debris. The way Loki's body was hidden suggested something more than a simple kill. This caching behavior, where a predator deliberately conceals its prey, was a significant clue, hinting at a calculated and experienced hunter at work. The scene was far too methodical for an alligator, which typically swallows prey whole, or for another python, which rarely caches food. The evidence pointed away from the usual suspects. The team realized they were standing at the site of a fresh wildlife crime scene. The details surrounding Loki's death could finally provide answers to the mysterious python beheadings that had puzzled scientists for years. 
Loki's loss was deeply felt among the team, yet his death marked a turning point, a breakthrough that could unravel the secrets of the Everglades' hidden predators. The evidence began to point toward a new kind of predator, one both powerful and cunning, capable of taking down a giant python and hiding the evidence. The investigation took on new urgency. Who, or what, had the strength, intelligence and audacity to kill and cache a massive python? The team was determined to find out, knowing the answer could reshape their understanding of the Everglades food web. The answer when it came, would challenge everything scientists thought they knew about predator-prey relationships in this wild landscape. The case was about to break wide open, promising new revelations about the secret lives of Florida's most elusive hunters. Treating Loki's death as a forensic case, scientists approached the scene with meticulous care, collecting every clue and scrutinizing the evidence. Their attention quickly turned to the caching behavior, a classic move for felines like bobcats, who are known to cover their prey to hide it from scavengers and competitors. Panthers too are known for this behavior, but the evidence didn't fit their profile. Alligators and bears were ruled out, the scene was too tidy, lacking the chaos those larger predators usually leave behind. To catch the culprit in the act, the team set up a trail camera at the site, hoping to capture the mysterious visitor's return. The next morning, anticipation was high as the scientists reviewed the footage. What they saw was astonishing. A healthy adult bobcat, moving with purpose, sniffing and carefully investigating the buried python. The animal's behavior was deliberate, as if it knew exactly what it was looking for. This bobcat, weighing less than half of Loki, was now the prime suspect. The size difference was striking, yet the evidence pointed squarely at this agile predator. This was unprecedented. Bobcats were supposed to be python prey, not the other way around. The idea that a native feline could take on such a formidable invasive snake challenged everything scientists thought they knew about predator-prey dynamics in the Everglades. The camera had captured the smoking gun. For the first time, there was visual proof of a bobcat interacting with a python carcass, and possibly even hunting it. The evidence was clear, a native predator had turned the tables on an invasive species. The Everglades, long dominated by pythons, had a new contender. The research community was stunned. The footage sparked heated debates and excitement among biologists, who had never witnessed such a reversal in the food chain. The home team had scored but more proof was needed. Could this be a one-time event, or was it the start of a new trend in the Everglades ecosystem? Could a bobcat really kill a giant python? The question lingered, fueling further investigation and curiosity. The next step, a detailed necropsy. Scientists needed to examine the python's remains for signs of trauma, bite marks, or other clues that could confirm the bobcat's role in Loki's demise. The mystery was close to being solved. Each new piece of evidence brought the team closer to understanding this remarkable encounter. The Everglades had a new hero, a native predator bold enough to challenge the invaders and reclaim its territory. The balance of power was shifting, and the story of Loki and the Bobcat was just the beginning of a new chapter in the wild heart of Florida. The necropsy on Loki's remains was the final test. Inside the python's throat, scientists found bobcat fur and a single sharp bobcat claw. This was irrefutable. The bobcat hadn't just scavenged, it had fought and killed the python. The evidence painted a vivid picture, a desperate, violent struggle. The python tried to constrict and swallow the bobcat, but the cat fought back from inside its jaws. The lost claw was a testament to the ferocity of the fight. This was the first direct proof of a bobcat killing a large, adult Burmese python. Previously, bobcats raided python nests for eggs, but this was something new. The case was closed. Florida's bobcats were evolving into python hunters. The implications for the Everglades were enormous. Nature was fighting back. The story had taken a stunning turn. The evidence allowed scientists to reconstruct the epic battle. During a cold snap, the sluggish python was vulnerable. The bobcat, warm-blooded and agile, seized the opportunity. It attacked the python's head, aiming to kill quickly. The python fought back, coiling and trying to swallow the cat. Inside the snake's jaws, the bobcat clawed and bit, eventually breaking free. In a final assault, it severed the python's head. Exhausted but victorious, the bobcat cached the carcass for later. This was a true David and Goliath moment. Native predator versus invasive giant. 
The Bobcat's intelligence and adaptability had turned the tables. For the first time, the Python was prey. The Everglades had a new apex hunter. The battle for survival had a new chapter. This wasn't just a wild story, it was a turning point for the Everglades. For years, Python seemed unstoppable, wiping out native species. Now, a native predator had learned to fight back. This was evidence of rapid adaptation, bobcats exploiting python weaknesses, especially during cold snaps. Other predators like black bears have also been documented killing pythons. Nature was developing its own python control system. If bobcats, bears, and panthers joined the fight, they could help suppress python numbers where humans can't. The feat is remarkable, a 25-pound bobcat taking down a 50-pound snake. It's a testament to the resilience of native wildlife. The narrative had shifted. The python's invincibility was a myth. The Everglades home team was finally scoring. Optimism returned to the conservation community. The story of Loki and the bobcat is a testament to nature's resilience. Invasive species like the Burmese python disrupt ecosystems, but nature adapts. The Everglades is pushing back. Native predators are learning, evolving in real time. Bobcats that hunt pythons may pass on their skills, creating a new generation of python hunters. This is co-evolution in action, a dance between predator and prey. The scale of the python problem is immense, but this discovery offers hope. If we protect native predators they could become powerful allies in controlling pythons. The problem isn't solved, human intervention is still crucial, but the narrative has shifted from crisis to resilience. Nature is not a passive victim, it's an active force for balance. This could be just the beginning. More native species may join the fight. The Everglades' wild heart is stirring. The future of the Everglades is uncertain, but the rules have changed. Burmese pythons are no longer invincible. Native predators are learning to fight back. Conservation now means supporting both removal efforts and the health of bobcats, bears, and panthers. Protecting their habitats is crucial for long-term python control. Every acre of wilderness, every wildlife corridor, strengthens this natural defense. The python problem won't vanish overnight, but nature is adapting. Scientists will keep studying this evolving relationship, learning and adjusting strategies. The story of the bobcat and the python is a lesson in humility and hope. Nature's capacity to heal is profound. For the first time in decades, the Everglades has a real chance at balance, and the home team is finally on the scoreboard.